It is January 12th, 6 o'clock, and this meeting of the Huntsville City Council is called to order. Welcome. Our invocation tonight will be given by the Reverend Frederick Woods, chaplain at Crestwood uh, Medical Center and uh, representative of the Interfaith Mission Council, and the invocation will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance given by Councilman Mark Russell. Please stand for the invocation if you are able and desire to do so. Reverend if you could bow your heads with me as we pray. God of all creation, we thank you for this day and for the many blessings we receive. We thank you for this new year. Grant our communities at large continue peace and blessings and justice for all throughout the remaining of the year. As we begin this meeting, we come to you asking blessings upon the mayor, the city council members, that each of them may use all that their best skills and judgment, keeping themselves impartial and neutral. We seek your help with our efforts and our affairs and our decisions for our community. Help them to accomplish the goals while displaying your character. We ask blessings upon all the public officials. Grant safety to our police officers as they serve. And God, as they all serve, allow them to do so with your divine intelligence and guidance and support. Open their minds so that they may receive your eternal wisdom and open their spirits to know that you are leading and guiding. These things we ask in your wonderful name, Jesus, amen. amen. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Woods. Thank you, Councilman Russell. You have received copies of the minutes of the meeting held on December 15th. Are there any changes or additions to be made to the minutes? If not, the minutes will be uh, accepted as um, presented. Uh, item number four, resolutions and special recognitions. We have a number of them tonight. Mayor Battle. Thank you very much. If uh, I could ask Kenny Anderson to come up and bring up the Kathy crew tonight, we have a young lady that which we are going to um, honor and recognize, and she is the daughter of a good friend, uh, Chris Robinson. So, uh, Kenny, will you present our Kathy Youth of the Month? Thank you, Mayor and Council. If Chelsea Robinson, oh, here she is, <laughs> will come up at this time. Um, her proud dad is in the audience there. Uh, we're glad to see him tonight as well. Every month we have the privilege of recognizing a young person in a community who is doing something distinguished. And tonight we have the privilege of acknowledging Chelsea Robinson. She has a list of accomplishments as long as most people's resumes. And that is quite impressive. But among some of the things that she's involved in is a cancer, for relay, uh, cancer relay for Life initiative, Key Club. She's a Lee High School ambassador. She's with the Gamma Sorority Beta Club. She works with Special Olympics. She's also been a Panoply volunteer, a NASA Moon Buggy volunteer. She also developed a GoFundMe campaign to support young people at her school who were dealing with some uh, personal challenges, and she has done so much more. Um, we could not even spend enough time doing that. But because of all of the things that you have done tonight, Chelsea, we're recognizing you as the January 2007 Rocket City Broadcasting, Kathy Young Citizen of the Month. Congratulations. <laughs> There's some special people that are joining me tonight. I'm going to start and end with Rick, and then we'll just kind of move on down the line. Thank you, Kenny. On behalf of Rocket City Broadcasting, we'd like to thank you very much for all that you do for the community and wish you all success and continue your great work. Thank you so much. Here's a token of our gift from me. Thank you. Chelsea, on behalf of the Optimus Club of Huntsville, we've been serving the community for over 70 years. It is my pleasure to present to you this token of our appreciation to thank you for all that you've done and um, thank you for being a wonderful leader in the community. You're welcome. And Chelsea, you're the type of young citizen 
that my wife and I as the founders were thinking about. You're the epitome of what we were trying to accomplish here, and we're just so proud of you. And on behalf of Huntsville Utilities and our CEO, Mr. Tony Owens, we would like to present you a bag of stuff, and there's something in there uh, for your mind, body, and soul, and don't spend it all in the same area. Thank, Thank you. you. Chelsea, on behalf of the Human Relations Commission for the City of Huntsville and the mayor of this great city, I present you your certificate and continue the great work that you're doing. Thank you, sweetheart. Chelsea, on behalf of the Huntsville Police Department and Chief Mark McMurray and all of the Huntsville Police Officers, we'd like to recognize you for your exemplary service to the community. Keep up the good work. Chelsea, finally, we have a coin from the city which we want to present you and say thank you for doing it. The coin from the city is made for people who make Huntsville a better place, and you have certainly done that. So thank you so much, and congratulations. And I'd like to ask Kenny to stay up here, too, because we have another special presentation tonight. And uh, Kenny, you want to call up some friends? Yes, the month of January is National Mentoring Month, and every January we have the privilege of recognizing a very important organization that takes the lead on this initiative day after day in our community and around our nation. I want to call Emmett Moore up at this time, who's CEO and Executive Director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and he's got some people that he's going to bring with him, and I'll let Emmett briefly introduce them. Doing fine. Thank you, Kenny. This is our one of our board members, Brandy Quick, and uh, the our special events coordinator, uh, Brittany O'Hare. So they are both part of our agency, very important parts of our agency, and what we do for National Mentoring Month. So thank you very much. And National Mentoring Month is one of those times that we can recognize organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and Emmett and I talk regularly about all of the different organizations in our community that provide mentoring. So this is actually an opportunity to acknowledge all of those organizations that are doing great things in our community for our young people. And Emmett, we have a proclamation here from the city of Huntsville. It has 11 whereases, and I'm going to save everybody the whereases, <laughs> but it, it officially names this Mentoring Month for January 2017. And uh, to you and all the organizations out there who take young people and mentor them and make them into productive citizens, I want to say thank you because you do such a great job in um, taking our youth and showing them that somebody cares and showing them the way and the path of how to be um, a productive citizen, and that is so important to us as a community. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you. Congratulations to Chelsea, congratulations Emmett, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Item 4B is a resolution for adoption by the council, a resolution recognizing Daryl M. Bell as the guest speaker at the Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Breakfast to be held January 16th, 2017 at the Von Braun Center North Hall. Chair moves for approval. Second. Uh, uh, second by Mr. Culver. Sorry, uh, all in favor, please Aye. indicate. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, we will move on now to 4D announcements. Council members, item 15T has been deleted. And item 15W has a substitute A, which you should find at your place. Some minor changes made to that contract. Other than 15, 15T has been deleted, 15W has substitute A. We also have Huntsville Utilities with us tonight to make announcements regarding the electric rate change presentation presented by Tony Owens, the interim CEO, and for the um, public's um, notification. The council will conduct a work session on the rate increase that will be very briefly presented to you tonight. Uh, 
a more thorough presentation will be made on next Thursday, January 19th at 6 p.m. in these chambers. Please join us for that. This is simply to announce and to introduce um, the rate increase. Mr. Owens, thank you for joining us. The time yes, is yours. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Robinson. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, just give you a brief overview of uh, our proposed uh, local rate increase that we're obviously going to propose to the city council. Um, I just I think I have about four or five slides here, and I'll go through them quickly. We have a uh, back Monday night. We had a public meeting, and uh, Joe will be giving us a brief on that when I when I finish. Also, next Thursday night we have scheduled a council work session, which uh, will give a more detailed and thorough presentation and, and respond to questions. The first slide there just gives you a little of our rate history, uh, just quickly. Uh, back in October of 2002. Uh, the council approved a rate increase, uh, which was 5.5% on availability and demand in energy. And we also had a dollar and 33 cent increase on availability. And uh, that put our uh, availability at $5 uh, for a residential customer. Then we, our next increase was in 2011. And I might add, uh, the increase prior to 2002 was actually in 1987. So, uh, in 2011, uh, we asked for another increase, which was a 3.5 percent, and uh, it was a $3.11 increase <coughs> to availability. Uh, back in May and uh, October, actually it was April, we come before the council with a recommendation, a proposal for a, uh, a rate increase, which was a total of $4.90. Uh, actually, we asked for a $2.50 increase to availability in May. And then $2.40 increase uh, was, uh, was asked for uh, in October. Uh, the council uh, asked us to uh, go back and look at this and, and come back to the council with uh, some alternatives. Uh, what we heard from, uh, from the council and, and meetings and things of that nature is that any rate increase should be spread uh, across all rate classes. Uh, increases should be both in the availability and in the usage charges and uh, consideration should be given to uh, impacts on fixed and low income rate payers and also we were asked to try to retain the multi uh, multiple usage tiers uh, in our case we have a two-tier um, uh, support for the thing it's a zero to 1400 kilowatt hours uh, is one tier and then anything over 1400 kilowatt hours is another uh, the uh, average consumption in Huntsville for a residential consumer is about 1450 kilowatt hours so what we're bringing to you for a proposal is uh, and <clears throat> will be across the board 2.75 percent increase uh, it's across the availability, the demand and energy increase for residential, general service, commercial, industrial, and outdoor lighting. Um, what that means to the customer is a 29 cent uh, increase in the uh, availability charge for the month, which currently it's $8.88, which it'll take it to $9.17. And then you can see the uh, kilowatt hour increase that we're proposing uh, in the two-tier approach. Below the 1,400 kilowatt hour, it would be 0.246 cents per kilowatt, and above the 1,400, it would be 0.268 cents uh, per kilowatt. Uh, some reasons uh, for the rate increase is uh, electric system, our, our system operation and, and maintenance. Uh, <clears throat> we need that to maintain the level of reliability that we currently have with the system. Uh, we measure, we, we have a lot of metrics that uh, we measure the reliability of our system with, and uh, we compare obviously those metrics to other systems. Uh, we have an extremely high reliability rate with our system. We also um, have a, a good response time to outages and things like that when we're compared to other electrical systems, and we want to maintain that. Uh, some of this rate increase is for the substation improvements throughout the service area. Uh, we have approximately 100 <coughs> substations, that, uh, and it's, uh, it's constant operation and maintenance of those stations. Our tree trimming program, which uh, prevents outages and uh, also helps us with our response and, and being able to get power back on. 
uh, pole inspection and replacement, our pole change out program. Uh, we have approximately, well, actually, we have over 100,000 poles in, uh, in our electric system. And, of course, the Osprey Utility Electric System covers most of, uh, well, all of Madison County, actually. Um, general development and uh, service extensions and uh, system expansion. Um, of course, all our funding comes <clears throat> for expenses actually uh, comes from sales revenues. Uh, our current sales revenue is obviously a, a huge variable in it is uh, weather and uh, customer behavior. And of course, we, like everyone else, have to deal with supply and material cost, and uh, they've increased steadily over time. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I would, uh, I'd like to have Joe, he's going to come up and give you a brief on some of the comments that we, uh, that we heard in the public hearing. And again, we will, uh, uh, next Thursday night, uh, we're preparing for a, a more in-depth and, uh, you know, as far as presentation <coughs> to the council in the work session. Joe. Thank you, Tony, and I uh, want the council to know that oh, we... Mr. Gerdeson, please identify yourself. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Joe Gerdes, uh, representing Huntsville Utilities. Um, this time, uh, we, went to, uh, we went farther to try and notify the public about the meeting, and I think the turnout reflected that. Uh, we did Facebook Live for the very first time, and we think that that was very successful. We'll probably continue to do that going forward. Um, some of the questions that came up during the meeting uh, uh, from our local energy efficiency and renewable energy crowd, there were questions about alternatives for consumers and for Huntsville Utilities. Uh, that conversation obviously involves TVA, and going forward we will continue to have that conversation. Uh, concerns about increasing rates for fixed and declining incomes, and that has a lot to do with the approach that we're taking, uh, and I believe had a lot to do with the uh, concerns that council expressed back in the spring. Um, there were inquiries about our extreme energy makeover eligibility, primarily about how uh, customers with natural gas cannot participate. It is a program for electric customers because it's a grant from TVA, uh, but we are looking at ways to expand that in the future after the grant period. We don't know what that will look like yet. Uh, there were some clarifications or questions on which classes would be impacted. Uh, there was some misunderstanding of some information that went out, particularly relative to the availability charge. And as Tony said, that 2.75% is applied to the consumption rates, the availability charge, and the demand in energy. Um, there were also some concerns about this uh, rate increase funding the fiber network, and that is not the case. That, that project has been funded in in another way, uh, and we explained that, of course, back in the spring when that all happened. Uh, and then there were some requests for documentation um, by one member, or one member of the public in particular that was present, and that documentation was provided today. So uh, that person has received all that information, and then I'm sure we'll communicate some more over what he's looking at. Um, because we spent a lot of time on social media, uh, promoting these meetings and trying to get that turnout that you're looking for and we're looking for. There were some things that were repeated, and we mentioned these Monday nights, but I think it bears repeating because we want to dispel any of those misperceptions that are out there. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of concern that we purposefully scheduled the meeting on the night of the national championship game, and the, um, the meeting was scheduled well in advance of anybody knowing perhaps not hoping that Alabama would be in the game, but um, mm. we certainly could not have known that that would happen. Um, Huntsville Utilities employees do not receive any discount on their utility services. They also do not receive bonuses. Um, our meter readers do not estimate their meter readings unless that meter is not accessible uh, due to a locked fence gate or perhaps there's an animal on the property that can't be subdued or put away. Um, <clears throat> our last increase, as you saw on the slide before, was in 2011. Uh, we did not raise rates last year, and there was a perception that we had done that. Um, and then there was a lot of conversation about uh, the deregulated states and how we should encourage competition. There are 17 states in the United States that have deregulated competitive utility markets, and consistently they are all 
in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 percent higher in rates than the unregulated states or the or the regulated states so we even though we have the territorial right service we're still less expensive on our utility rates in this area and um, every electric utility we are aware of charges an availability fee or a minimum amount for extending service to customers <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Is there any any questions or anything? That uh, that's all we have for tonight for the announcement. Mr. Kling. Uh, I guess just to clarify some things that I'm hearing from people and and um, everything. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about Google Fiber. Is this rate increase being used to support or subsidize Google yes. Fiber? No, it's not. Uh, as I mentioned in, in one of the slides there, you know, the rate increase is primarily for operation and maintenance and, and system, system, excuse me, system improvements. Uh, the, the Google Fiber, we're, as you well know, we're in the fiber construction currently. And uh, uh, the basic fiber system is for the electric water and gas department. Uh, we'll use that infrastructure for control and monitoring of the, the system. One thing is, uh, our outage management system associated with uh, electric and also distribution automation. Uh, while building out the fiber system, we, we did overbuild and in order to lease that fiber to potential tenants. In this case, uh, Google just happens to be one of the tenants that'll be leasing excess fiber. And uh, we, have a, we actually have a 20-year lease uh, with Google uh, for, to help recover some of those fiber costs. So uh, just in general terms, I mean, I'm talking to people out in the public, uh, uh, I can say that uh, this rate increase is to be used for repair, maintenance, uh, the things that are, need to be done to uh, the vehicles to get the crews out to outage areas, uh, the wiring, the cabling, uh, the telephone poles, those. Yes, sir. The yes, basic sir. meat and potato type things that you need just to keep your, keep your system up. Yes, especially sir. in cold weather like this yes okay councilman keith um hey how you doing um i guess with the increase comes increased awareness and there's a couple of things since i'm new to this position i sort of am in a unique spot but I, I think some things came up at the last meeting one let me say hats off to, to jay and you guys for doing the social media i think you had over three thousand views a number of shares that's information that can be replicated and it's free um, and I hope that you guys are going to promote it the same way for the next week's event. Um, I, but there was a couple of things that I hope you will bring to the next event, and I just wanted to sort of go over those. We discussed the SHARE program, and I think uh, uh, Colonel Oshesky just said that it was about a 2% involvement. I was wondering if we could get the number on what that 2% was, okay. um, how many people are giving into the program, and if there's potential that we can increase it. Um, as you had a guy, it was sort of split. One was on fixed income, I believe, and he said that he understood the importance of it and didn't mind paying an extra two dollars and fifty a cent. Then you had another person who said they don't think they could pay the two dollars and fifty cent. So is there a program of which we can assess that? And if the share program is that, how much are we getting and can we increase it? Um, another thing I think we need to talk about is that um, at this last rate there was a split. Um, did that guy did that split affect you guys? And if it did affect you guys um, in your rating, why is it important to get a five oh split? vote this time um, letting the public know the importance of having a consensus here at the city council i don't believe in arbitration from the council's point of view you guys are the experts so there's a lot of front work proactive work we should be doing in order to not affect um, in a sense the reflection of huntsville so explaining to the people who come out next thursday um, the importance of getting a 5-0 vote also um there are other programs in the city who think this type of stuff is important energy efficiency um, i got a wonderful opportunity to meet with uh, an organization called nexus i'm sure you guys are aware of them um, understanding uh, what the involvement with Hunter utilities and nexus is if there can be an involvement um, what that should look like and the history of it again i'm unique to this position so i don't understand it fully but i would imagine we want a better huntsville and we want to lower energy costs and if there's companies out there um, that do such things, can we get involved with them uh, to get those things done? But I guess the, um, the most important part is um, like, I would love to hear about the SHARE program. 
Can we increase the percentage of people giving into the SHARE program? Maybe we can um, have a process where maybe three months of people on fixed income come, if they meet your qualifications, you can cover what the 2.75 increase would do to them and then allow them time to get ready you know, to, for the next effect. And finally, if, if that's the case of the 2.75, um, can we have some likelihood or some understanding that maybe you guys would be coming back for another increase in a certain amount of time? Uh, if there is no likelihood, that's fine. Or if you can foresee that there will be another potential increase, the public should know that as well. But um, if I can get the answer to those things, that would be a blessing. And Councilman okay. Keith, you want those answers at the, at at the work session? At the work thank session. You. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you. We'll be prepared to uh, respond to each one of those. Uh, and, and also, uh, for, the, for the public's uh, information, we will be recording any questions that the public raises tonight regarding the rate increase. Uh, Huntsville Utilities staff will be recording those, and we will address those at the work session next week. Again, the presentation next week on January 19th at 6 o'clock will be a more in-depth um, presentation that will likely answer a lot of the questions people have tonight. So we don't want to cover that ground twice. Um, but we look forward to having you join us, and we'll answer all, any of those questions at that time. Dr. All right. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Oh, Councilman Culver. Yes. And um, these are some questions that have been raised by some of the residents in the district that I'm so blessed to represent. So I'm going to put them to you in the manner in which they were presented to me, uh, namely, and they use the term bonus as it relates to Huntsville Utility employees. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to explain this tonight, but if you would be so kind as to include that in your presentation in terms of how employees <coughs> get raises and if bonuses okay. oh, are applicable, if you could address <coughs> that as well, please. No, Just right, kind sir. of a, a, a flow chart of how you reward your employees. Certainly. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Dr. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Any right. other comments from the council or Madam questions? President, I, I don't know if, if it could be done or what the logistics involved are, but um, could we do a, a live broadcast of that portion of the work session for the public? Because I think cable TV, especially with Kelly promoting it uh, and the Internet, would be a good way to reach, reach the public about getting information out about this meeting. We don't normally broadcast work sessions. We don't normally have uh, public comments at work sessions, but I think given the nature of what we're doing here at that work session, we could probably do both. Uh, any other <coughs> comments from Huntsville Utilities? No, yeah, ma'am. Thank you very much Thank for being you. here. We look forward to meeting with you on the 19th at 6 o'clock. Moving on, uh, item number five, business with outside legal representation. We have none. Number six, public hearings. Six A, public hearings to be held. Six A1, now is the time and place for a public hearing to hear the appeal of Sutton Place condominiums, appealing the decision of the Liquor License Review Committee approving a retail liquor lounge license with entertainment to Braselton Properties, Inc., doing business as Plush Horse at 2021 Gulf Road, Huntsville, Alabama, 35802. This was said at the November 3rd, 2016 Liquor License Review Committee meeting, or I'm sorry, that was the license was approved at the November 3rd, 2016 Liquor License Review Committee meeting, and the public hearing was set on December 1st, 2016. Um, Mr. McGuffey, will you be addressing this? Sure, Jim McGuffey, Planning Department. I'm not sure if anybody's here or not from uh, Sutton Place Condominiums, but what this is is an appeal from that. Uh, association on Gulf Road to the approved license at the Plush Horse and uh, the, the the liquor board approved it uh, in November and the uh, anybody with a with an argument against it has the opportunity to appeal to the council and that's what this is tonight is for them to express their concerns to this body so that's what this appeal is for very good thank you is there anyone here who would like to speak to this please go to the microphone uh, give us your name and your address Okay, my name is Linda Ferguson. I live at 2025 Golf Road, Sutton Place Condominiums. I own two condos there. I've lived there for 14 years. Two years ago, we had this same issue with the horse. We won it. Nothing's changed since then. Mr. Buzzson sued the city over it. There was a big 
article in the Hustle Times, a bar no more, and here we come back two years later. I have a letter here from my next door neighbor who really sums it up the best of any of them I've read, and y'all should have the ones on record from two years ago. I turned in quite a few then. It says, to the City Council of Huntsville, Alabama, I am Michael Sean Huffy, property owner, and in parentheses and capital letters, taxpayer of Unit 212 at Sutton Place Condominiums on Gulf Road. I am protesting that the establishment known as the horse to be reopened for business as a night club bar. In the past, it has brought nothing but trouble and issues in our neighborhood, personal safety and property. Constant threats against our personal safety, disturbing the peace, violence in the parking lots. There were many times in the past of gunfire in the parking lot of the establishment. My bedroom window is only 72 feet from the parking lot. So is mine, I'm two doors down from him. <clears throat> I also own one in the 500 building that is only 25 feet away. And all the people in that parking lot throw all their beer bottles and everything at our vehicles within 25 feet. My grandson came out and told him they should not be doing this and the guy pulled a gun on him. I do not appreciate that. Across the street there are families with children in the park, uh, park place apartments, enough ch children to warrant three school bus stops on the street alone. The personal threats come to us with racial slurs as well as violence for not allowing club goers to park on our private parking lot, and that's in caps. There's a noise from the club goers yelling at all hours of the night, plus their car stereos at full volume and in parentheses, violation of city ordinance. And the constant peeling out of tires while driving at high rates of speed on our neighborhood street. Our street is a one way up and a one way out. It is not straight to anything else other than coming to that club and down. The noise interferes with our sleep in order to go to work the next morning and or school because some parties have been held on even the weeknights. The club management property owner doesn't use private sec security to control the crowd outside, thus putting the people at risk in this neighborhood. <coughs> the Huntsville police do little at nothing to help with controlling the crowd. They don't even show up without having to beg them. By allowing this establishment to reopen as a nightclub bar, you are putting at risk our safety and property every time we have to defend it on our own. This is a neighborhood, not a downtown city street, where this type of establishment belongs. This all started back up again in October. There were three nights in a row that this club was open. First night, we had no prior warning or anything. But in the parking lot, we found flyers because they were passed out everywhere in the neighborhood stating two parties. There is one on the seventh saying, one lit ass rave party. The other one is the overnight up all night saying the club's open from 10 to four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock's unacceptable in any location. Nowhere on these does it say no alcohol involved. But Bill Kling is a personal friend and a very good supporter of our neighborhood. He got on the phone and found out from the chief of police that this was supposed to be a non-alcoholic event. But nowhere on these does it say non-alcohol event. So everybody in the world shows up for these. The two nights, Friday night, Saturday night, was nothing but horrendous up there. By one o'clock, I had called Huntsville Police six times to come up there and help us. The sixth time, when they're coming up too wide up that street, they finally decided most of these people weren't even going in the club, they were watching everybody else. I told them right then and there that no emergency vehicle, whether it be Hemsey, a fire truck, police, would not be able to come up that road. And that's an endangerment of our whole community. That is not right. Okay, Saturday night, it was better because Bill Kling once again stood up for me. He called the police chief and the chief said, yes, there was a lot of activity in that neighborhood that night. He told him that we should see a marked improvement. Well, Saturday night we did, but it was still bad. They ended up having to shut the road off at the convenience store, which is, I believe, Hunter's Ridge going up back behind us, which put everybody going to our top entrance to get into our parking lot. My neighbor and I, have uh, trucks. I parked my long bed 18 Dodge, um, what do you want to call it, 1500, I guess it is, blocking one entrance. His was blocking the other, and we're trying to keep them come in and out. But one thing, and we know who lives there, 
But most of these people will come up and they'll tell you, well, my mama lives here. Was your mama going to the club with you? No. My brother lives here. No. I know everybody up there. I've been there almost 15 years now. They come out, and there was five girls in one vehicle, and I don't appreciate this, yelling, we hate white people. I'm not a racist, never have been, don't intend on being one. Then other cars getting out, and my grandson, one of them got by us, and it was big souped up, big wheels, blaring radio. He said, you need to back up and turn out and get out. The guy got up like he was going to charge after my 26-year-old grandson. I had my cell phone out, and I was ready to video him, and he sees me, and he speeds out of there. There is no control up there for us to have any kind of peace and safety when that club is open. So I do not think... I mean, I gave all the members, especially Bill Kling first, all the minutes from the meeting where this was turned down the first time. Sergeant Mark Roberts at the time, he's now with the federal building and not with the police force, gave a very eloquent speech as to why there should never be a bar in a neighborhood. He did it in Mr. Culver's and Delvin Keith is new. It was in Mr. Showers. I believe Mark Russell in Five Points, wasn't it? I don't know. I think he referenced your, you too. I'm not this sure. This is not an opportunity for you to interact with the council. Please oh. just go ahead oh, and I'm finish sorry. your. Please okay. go ahead and finish your statement. Okay. Um, then again, on December 3rd, it was open again. This time, two police officers with their lights blaring going up at two o'clock in the morning. Right after them is Hemsey. There's been a fight up there. They're minor energy. Well, I call Mr. Kling once again. I found out from the chief there was minor injuries and second or third degree pot <coughs> possession up there, marijuana. At this point, our next step, if it, you allow them to have a club up there, the next time there is an event, my next door neighbor's son-in-law is Al Whitaker of Channel 19 News. I'll have him up there vi filming everything so they know the whole city's gonna know exactly what we have to put up with. The other one would be Margot Gray, because when there was a shooting up there two years ago, she interviewed me on TV I had five gun casings, and the police department told me when I called them that it was fireworks that night, not gunshots. We had two witnesses up there, me, one of them, and my son's girlfriend saw the shooter. So it is not safe when that club is open. So that is why we are appealing it to be reopened. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council on this matter? Mr. Timberlake. <clears throat> well, point of information for that. Please, citizen, please inter introduce. Uh, Ralph Timberlake, for 21 to 17, Atkins Drive, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810. I rise at a point of information and as a concerned citizen because the issue raised by my fellow citizen brings great <clears throat> anguish to my heart and the fact that the community is being put at risk and that our city public servant failed to discern or ex to state why this was granted. What would the important, what would the citizen in Huntsville going to gain by having this establishment in the particular place it was, it is in or sought to be in or why it should not have been. I think more information <clears throat> in light of the fact that this was contested should have been brought before this august body so that the citizens would know that this was done in their best interest. To simply grant a license because someone asked over the objection of someone who may be adversely affected is in my judgment not doing one due diligence. To that end, I ask that you delay this appointment and ask that it go back before the uh, uh, body to whom you have entrusted to make these kind of meaningful decisions, that they make sure that there was a meaningful reason, an overriding reason for putting this in over those citizens' objections, because some of those objections horrified me. One way in, one way out. 
loud noise and all these things and children being subjected to this kind of uh, uh, behavior is intolerable and it's unconscionable. I think you would be doing less than your uh, obligation if you failed to send this back and get us a more prudent rationality to why it should be done. Thank you very much. Uh, Ralph Timberlake, 2117 Atkin Drive, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810, and accept my humble apology, Madam President. We've, we've got it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council on this matter? Sir, please state your name and address for the record. Charles Vogel, 2225 Golf Road. Uh, my concerns are the amount of people that come up that hill that uh, my grandkids and my children are subject to the inability to come up the hill because of all the cars too wide clear down to the parkway the noise level the gunshots the alcohol thrown all over the parking lot and the inability to park in your own parking lot because they're full so i started staying up all night standing in my parking lot asking folks not to park here. As a concerned resident for 12 years there, I can't accept this. I don't think I should be subject to this. This is my home and my children's home. And the alcohol and this that goes at that club has to pass up, if I was to guess, a thousand residents to get to that club. I don't know if you know Golf Road. Mm -hmm. It's one way in, and if you call the police and say the traffic is down at the light at the bottom of the hill, too wide, if there was an emergency, it wouldn't happen. And that's my main concern, is to not have that club at the end of the road. And I do thank you for your time. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council on this matter? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Dewey Brazelton, president of Brazelton Properties. At one time, we had a gay club up there, and Ms. Ferguson said that was fine. She had no problem with it. Yet when we brought it before the council to give them a license, she came up and protested. She says she's not a racist. She is. All these people that's up there she's complaining about are from A&M College. And we, we lease it without a liquor license because if we had a liquor license, the police would be there and take care of business. We have a party up there at all these places she's talking about. It hadn't had a liquor license, any of these parties that she's mentioned. A&M students have parties. They head up one December the 3rd, uh, but they don't have liquor. Uh, somebody from Sutton Place called today and said teenagers were up there. They had a teenage party, I assume. But it's not illegal because they don't have a liquor license. It's just a clubhouse. But here again, Linda Ferguson's a racist. No problem about it because um, we. Mr. President, that's all I'm we going have. To have to ask you. That's, that's an issue of good name and character. Please refrain. Okay. Anyway, that's all we have up there in the last three years as parties for me and M College. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council on this matter? Mr. McGuffey, do you have anything to add to this discussion? Yes, ma'am. Just a little bit of history. This, this, dating back to 1975, we've we've had a license uh, on and off at this location. And in 2014, <coughs> September specifically, uh, the liquor board denied the license from Mr. Brazelton due to the occupant load of the building. It was over 700, which created a parking violation. Uh, in the last two years, we've been in the court systems. Uh, with his appeal process um, late this year, excuse me, late 2016, uh, he ap applied for a license with a much lower occupant load. The fire marshal and the police department and the planning department uh, made multiple trips and visits to the location. Uh, he significantly reduced the occupant load, therefore meeting the standards for parking. Uh, he provided a security plan to the police department uh, and upgraded his fire alarm systems within the structure. So taking in that into account, uh, the liquor board, uh, knowing that the rules had been satisfied in terms of ordinances, uh, chose to approve the location of the liquor license <coughs> at the Plush Horse. And, and now we're here tonight from the appeal. Thank you. Is there any other comments from the public? 
Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. The matter is now before the council and it's time for a motion. I would like to get Mr. Riley, if you would please, to walk us through the process because this is an unusual sort of a, a situation here. What would be appropriate at this point? I would uh, recommend that the motion be in the form and, and by making this recommendation, I'm not in any way stating any opinion on the actual motion. But for cleanness as far as in relation to the decision below and different things that could occur, uh, depending upon whether there are any abstentions and things of this nature, we are recommending that the motion be in form of a motion to approve the liquor license. Uh, that motion, of course, uh, if it is not seconded, it would fail, and therefore the liquor license would be denied. If it is seconded and the vote does not carry a majority of the council, then it would also fail, and that liquor license would be denied. If the motion was seconded and a majority of the council voted in favor of it, and by that I mean a majority of the full council, which is, is five, or three votes, uh, then it would it would pass at that at that juncture. Uh, so we believe that that would uh, to take care of any uncertainties as far as the relationship between the decision below and how the decision here before the council might impact that. So that is our recommendation. Uh, the council, in its uh, wisdom or its judgment, may also file a motion. Uh, to deny the application if it wishes, if that is uh, the wish of the individual council member that wants to make that motion. But we just feel like that in the uh, abundance of caution that this would be the cleanest way to present the motion for consideration. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Riley? In that case, um, the floor is open for a motion to approve the liquor, uh, the application for a license. Motion to approve. Second. So motion from Mr. Keith, a second from Mr. Culver. Uh, the floor is now open for discussion, Mr. Keith. Yes, and I, and I, I don't know who, this is gonna probably be a number of people who can answer this. As you can imagine, yeah, I'm new to this, so this is um, as objective as possible. You said that this was, this has been there since 1975. Our records state that it's been there at least since 1975. Before I was even born. So what came first? The apartments are the, are the, from what I understand, the club was there first. So the club was always there, and then they built the apartments. Um, and you said, when, when did they lose the liquor license? Uh, through the 90s, he, he applied for a restaurant license, uh, which changed some of the ordinances. And most recently, in 2009, um, when he reapplied for a restaurant, uh, some of the parking regulations had changed through the zoning ordinance. Uh, it put him in a spot where he was non-compliant <coughs> from a parking standpoint. Uh, and we got to 2014, and that's when he applied and, and did not get a license approved for okay. location. And then when you guys make the re recommendations for what would be the new license requirements, that takes some amount of time. These weren't just like paint the front door or anything like that. No, sir, they were not. We went up there and, and did site inspections. The fire marshal walked the building. Uh, police department walked the building. Um, and we, we went to the – actually required him to get a survey to provide the required parking spaces to get a count. Wonderful. Um, and let me understand this. Uh, if there's, who can, is there, can anybody speak on behalf of the police about this? Chief? Sergeant Ware should be able to speak Sergeant to Sergeant Ware, thank you. How you yes, doing, sir. Sergeant? Sergeant Jonathan Ware. Yes, sir. Now, do you, have you, freak, do you usually work when you, um, nightclubs in certain areas? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever done this location? Um, not currently. Uh, okay. In the past, when I was a third shift supervisor, I had been been there. All right. To your knowledge, let me say, have you ever had a nightclub or an entity of some sort? Because it, it, let me say this, I would love to shut down certain places for certain events, but well, there has never been a call. No, sir. Um, is there, and if there was a location in the city <clears> that <throat> increased its amount of calls, would that be something that the police department would take heed to? It would. Do you know if this is one of those locations? Uh, from the research that we've done during uh, the process that Mr. McGuffey talked about, we found that there's not a noticeable difference between the calls in the surrounding area when there is, an, is not a club. Gotcha. Hold on one second. Mr. McGuffey, the 
review board that we have, like liquor and license. How many people are on that? There's three voting members and three investigators that work for the voting members. Got you. Of the people who are on the board, if you were to just, I don't know, accumulate the amount of years spent looking at liquor licenses and understanding this, as well as knowing the individuals on the board, how many years would you say of experience you've had in 20, total? 25 plus. 25 plus. Now, understanding that you also on the liquor review board have the ability to hear from everybody else. Like people can then come to the liquor review board and make their appeals or ask you to not mm -hmm. allow them to have it. Absolutely. The liquor board requires notification to surrounding property owners and, and the surrounding property owners were notified and showed up to the liquor meeting for Absolutely. this case. Okay. And then this is my other question. I don't know who would be able to answer this. Maybe you would. Mm -hmm. She brought up the idea that there, it doesn't say on there that this is a non-alcoholic location. Is that required? The license that was granted for the events in November, December were non-alcohol based licenses. So alcohol <coughs> is not permitted uh, at those events. We, we cannot manage the advertising uh, for those events, but they were not allowed to have alcohol by their license. Gotcha. Um, and I don't know if maybe Mr. Riley can answer this for somebody. Is there a process in, in any circumstance that the city themselves can, through a process, revoke a liquor license? There is a process for revocation of the license. It's our opinion that once the license is granted, that any revocation there would have to go through uh, the state uh, liquor license agency in Montgomery. So we would not be able to revoke it ourselves here. Well, if if uh, will we be able to initiate the process? I guess. Well, uh, we would be able to initiate that process, but again, the decision making <coughs> entity would be in Montgomery. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, I think that's all I had. Um, I know, Mr. Jim, I didn't want to ask you everything, but I thank you for answering everything. One last question, uh, Sergeant. If you have uh, an increased amount, let's say that if you have a location that is increased, what is the process that you guys use to sort of handle increased crowd? Or is there a process in place of a new bar or anything that is opening where you guys understand that there might be, how do you suppress it is my question. Uh, there is, what we usually do is uh, we come up with a plan ahead of time when we know something like that's gonna open. We try to take into account anything that could happen from crowds, you know, overcrowding, uh, parking issues, litter, things like that. Um, I'm not sure why the citizens concerns weren't addressed in the past the chief and i weren't in place in the past when those concerns came about uh, but we do have ordinances that require the security plan <coughs> that the chief can increase the security that's required by the club because of its size if it's deemed that it's not doing its job right so he has the discretion to increase the amount of security yes, involved he does okay thank you so much man uh, other questions mr culver thank you madam chair so council members Here's, here's where we are. Um, and all of the concerns that I've heard, uh, especially yours, uh, Ms. Terry, Madam Linda, um, are, are genuine concerns, uh, as well as the other gentleman and Mr. Timberlake. Um, we have a property owner here who has property, just like other property owners, who is entitled to do whatever is legal for him to <coughs> do with that property. Now, it's, it's incumbent up, up upon us as council members to approve this because for one reason, he's met all of the requirements. Now, we may not like it. We can't make an ambiguous assumption and say that this particular place is gonna be just a problem area. I, I want to speak from experience. I had a club in the district that I'm so blessed to represent. You all may know about it. I shut it down. There were four people shot in that club. You may remember that a couple of years ago. Okay? So, so my emphasized point is that it's incumbent upon us to give this gentleman a chance. Now, if things get bad down the road, <coughs> you've heard from the sergeant and police department, action can be taken at that time, but it's not 
our place, in my opinion, to prejudge what may happen. Now, while I'm not that thrilled about a nightclub going in a neighborhood, uh, if it's <coughs> legal and the person has met the requirements, then it's incumbent upon us to do what thus says the law. However, I do want to interject this, and council members, if we approve this tonight, I think <coughs> this could be, uh, Ms. Linda, a tool that you can use uh, with the city to get us to purchase that property. Now, I'm going to digress. You may remember, you may remember Mr. Brazelton elected, and I don't know if this is still on the table, uh, Mr. Riley, this is something perhaps you and his legal team can sort out, but just to refresh our recollection, he offered to, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me, I'm sorry, whatever this property appraises for, he's willing to donate half of that to the city, <coughs> and the city purchase it at 50% of the appraisal. Now, that is a sweet deal. And in my opinion, it satisfies the property owner. It satisfies Miss Linda, residents in the surrounding area. And it affords our <coughs> parking, I'm, I'm sorry, our um, parks and recreation an opportunity to have a very, very, Mr. Timberlake, commodious facility that young people can go and <coughs> do positive and constructive things. So, so let's think about this. Let's, and, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Mr. Brazelton, but that deal that you proposed um, a couple of years ago was very attractive. Uh, if it could be resurrected, uh, I, I think that is something that we should look at. So having said that, council members, I beseech you to go ahead and support this so we can move forward and look at some other things. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Culver, I don't think we generally conduct real estate negotiations here at the council table, but thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Kling? Uh, Madam President, Mr. Culver's got my attention. I think that would be, uh, could be a good solution, especially with the golf course uh, situation being what it is, where we know we're probably going to be doing some renovations, capital improvements uh, to the golf course. Uh, back in the early 1960s, a little bit of history, uh, that building was there before Sutton Place, but when it was there, it was part of the uh, Parkway Country Club, and then it became... Uh, which was actually part of the golf course. It was the clubhouse uh, restaurant that went with it, and then it became the um, uh, <clears throat> Plantation Dinner Theater. And uh, again, very nice, very nice place. <clears throat> I guess the thing I'm concerned about, now just a little over a month ago, early December is when uh, we had the incident take place that uh, was being referred to. Uh, let's forget about the clientele, let's forget about alcohol, no alcohol, or whatever. Uh, I just, I'm just think it's crazy that the, um, the police department would sign off on this when there was an incident uh, with people calling uh, the police department to complain two o'clock in the morning, Saturday, no, Sunday morning, uh, because of noise out there, traffic and everything. Uh, can somebody shed some light on how the police department signed off on this approval in the aftermath of that incident and numerous calls, requests for service uh, that the police department received about the, uh, you know, incidents taking place at that location? Mr. McGuffey, would you like to address that? Or, or def defer to the police department. Pardon? I defer to the police department. Oh, I'm sorry. Sergeant, Sergeant Ware, Chief McMurray. Yes, sir, Mr. Kling. Um, as it was, the way it was in operation at that time, Mr. Braswellton can uh, <coughs> basically rent that premises out whenever he wants to. We don't have notice that anything's going on. Uh, you know, 
30 day or 29 days of the month it may be closed and one day of the month it may be open uh, you know that's basically what happened that night we if we don't know that there's something going on up there until it's already happening there's not much that we can do uh, if it was operating as a club and we knew that it was going to be open on a nightly basis that would give us a lot more information about what kind of resources we need to ship to that area does a does a shooting uh, marijuana possession uh, at a non-alcoholic event I'll grant you uh, after that took place the uh, is that still something that the police department condones by approving uh, this uh, license I did it know. is it is not something that we condone uh, once again it, the things that go on <coughs> uh, at a you know any rental premise if we don't know that something's being rented that night you know there's not a lot we can do does the does the police department have any records that they keep of calls for service at we, that location over we do the years in fact. yes sir were there any uh, that were taken in consideration I mean was there a number 10 15 50 over the past 14 years there have been a approximately 80 uh, criminal offenses that take that took place there in the surrounding apartments over the past 14 years there have been over 400 uh, so in comparison that's kind of what we looked at there was uh, also not a marked increase in crime uh, according to our statistics when the club was there and both when it was not <coughs> okay. I think mayor battle wanted to make a comment and if I could just to clear this up he rented the property it ha doesn't have to have a permit to rent the property at a non alcoholic he, he has event. a business license that allows him to do that and he can continue to do that yeah. and he, he can, can do continue that at to any do that. time yes sir at <coughs> any time without any permit from us without any any uh, With, overlooking by us yes sir without any notification at all to us he yeah. can continue to do that well I guess one final comment regardless of how this license issue is voted on tonight win or lose uh, I'll make a guess two years from now we're back up here one side or another uh, appealing what the other side does so uh, uh, we are not going to do negotiations but uh, I would would think that there could be some merit especially with the uh, uh, golf course work they're going to be doing to see what issues could be out there or agreements could be worked out uh, concerning that property in the city mr. Keith yes I just want to say something too and I guess I'm clearing this up here in my colleagues if that's <clears throat> the case I could tell you of a place called Stoner Field where I found shell casings they don't sell alcohol there um, I found alcohol there they don't <clears throat> throw parties there but I found people there selling marijuana um, I grew up off Bragg played ball there and I've called the police a number of times because of shootings earlier in this year um, and I've had a conversation with Captain Rice about suppressive work and had that conversation long term about how you suppress areas <clears throat> so I think it's important to understand it if we're just going off the conversation of incidents relative there are places in Northwest Huntsville we should just be shutting down um, and as, as objectively as I can be it is to my understanding if there is an issue or an increase the police department is willing to work with the owner to handle that issue yes sir uh, in addition to that the liquor license being granted allows us free access to walk in at any time that we wish that's wonderful to. Uh, however the way it's currently being run as a private business we would <coughs> have to obtain a search warrant and by the time you know at one o'clock in the morning I have to wake a judge up to get a search warrant to go inside to see if alcohol is in fact being sold by the time we obtain that search warrant uh, the party would most likely be over so this liquor license does afford us some extra enforcement opportunities that we don't currently have okay. and in your in your personal opinion and maybe Jim can answer this question as well as I listen to the testimonies because I understand the concerns There's places that we had to take basketball goals out of communities because a parent said that it was too loud in your personal opinion adding the alcohol as an ability to sell or not adding the alcohol as an ability to sell the property still runs and attracts a certain amount of people uh, yes sir um, I mean just from the testimony that we've heard you can hear that there was a large crowd there when there was no alcohol that was supposed to be sold there was a large crowd there 
years ago when there was alcohol being sold. So thank you, thank you, Sergeant. Which, uh, Mr. Clinton, police officers or council members do I call uh, when I'm woken up at two o'clock in the morning uh, with residents who are complaining because they can't go to sleep? <laughs> Those calls usually go to me. Are there any other questions from the council? I, I actually have some I'd like to, uh, to ask if no one else has any. Um, can you tell us about the, either the, from the police or Mr. McGuffey, wherever it was filed, the security plan that's required as part of the application? And I think, Sergeant Ware, that you mentioned that it could be an expanded security plan that in this case was required. Is that correct? Can you tell us what that security plan entails? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Braswellton worked with us on this security plan because of the size. Uh, uh, right now, he is required for four uh, security officers on premise who are from a licensed security company. Uh, one in the parking lot at all time, three <coughs> inside. Uh, if those numbers increase, his security officers will also increase. Uh, and in, in the course of this, if we find that that's not sufficient according to ordinance, the police chief can uh, require him to increase those security measures uh, whenever he sees fit. And Mr. McGuffey, the, the, you stated that the reason that the license was granted, the, the approval was granted <coughs> this time and it had been denied last time is that the occupancy numbers changed. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What, how will we assure that occupancy doesn't exceed what the, the agreed number? As Sergeant Ware mentioned, with a privilege license, it gives us the opportunity to make club checks and go in the establishment. The fire marshal has the ability to set the occupant load. If he goes and does a club check and the occupancy has changed, he's going to be in violation of parking, which therefore allows us to write a violation, a notice, and a citation through the zoning ordinance to put him in front of a judge, which at that point helps us start the process of revocation through the ABC board. How often are those club checks customarily made? As often I, as I needed? Do, as often as needed, yes, ma'am. I think the issue that makes this this situation unique is the fact that this is a club that is in the middle of a very densely populated residential area. It's the only sort of establishment like that in that area. And as Ms. Ferguson pointed out, you've got the club 25 feet from a resident. It is a very unusual area. Now, it was also stated that there is, has been precedent where when there is that sort of a situation, the license can be denied. Was that considered at all in, did, did that weigh in at all in your decision to apply the, or approve the license? It did, it did, but you know, in the past this club has, has performed properly um, and, and been granted license for many years. I think, you know, taking that into account, uh, the board felt that it was, uh, <clears throat> that it was okay to approve it. So there was no need to invoke that precedent, or, or to, to invoke the, the denial based on previous precedent? Correct. Um, there was an issue raised with regard to public safety, being able to get an ambulance, fire truck, or police cars up there. It, was that issue raised with you at all? It was. It was. We've The, the fire marshal and the chief have <clears throat> taken trips up there to make sure that a truck could get up there to extinguish any fires uh, and any, any public service as well. So anytime there's cars on the street that are blocking any sort of public service, you know, we can tow those cars or go into the club and have the club uh, shut down. And Sergeant Ware, just going back to you again, based on the history of reported incidents at the club, you don't feel that there is a problem granting the club a liquor, li liquor license? Uh, I don't in the fact that, once again, it gives us increased uh, enforcement powers. If he can continue to operate exactly as he is right now, and we just have to respond, uh, this gives me, if we get up there and there's too many people, like uh, Mr. McGuffey said, we can tell them that they have to close, and we can start, you know, we can enforce the sound ordinance, we can enforce litter ordinance, we can enforce if, on Mr. Brazelton, if his patrons are making too much noise leaving the club at night. Uh, why? these measures weren't taken in the past I don't know uh, once again but we do have the ability to do so so this will actually afford the residents a recourse that they don't currently have yes ma'am 
So what I'm hearing you say is that all the legal requirements have been met, that this will <clears throat> afford recourse to actually address the residents' concerns, and, and for those reasons, the approval was granted. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions or concerns from members of the council? Well, um, Madam Grant, Chairman, I just would point out, uh, you know, there's been a history, even, even the police department has admitted that there's been 80, 80 calls, 80 incidents, uh, and just, just at the beginning of last month, there were um, guns being fired. Uh, and again, we're talking about two o'clock in the morning on a on a Sunday morning, uh, and you know we're going to be going around with this. This comes up every now and then. One side wins, the other side wins, and you know back and forth. Uh, but again, I think the idea of, of the golf course, the contribution, half price, whatever you want to call it, that uh, that would certainly be something that would I think would be a win-win. We go all over the city uh, and we deal with neighborhood issues. We, we work hard on improving neighborhoods. Uh, District 4, we work to improve neighborhoods. District 1, District 5, District 3, District 2. And uh, here's a neighborhood that's had a long history. This is not a one-time deal. This has been up. And, uh, you know, these folks are asking their elected officials for, for assistance. And... Uh, you know, I think there are issues that have been raised, and uh, uh, I just don't think that uh, you know that there's going to be anything positive that would come from granting granting a, a liquor license. Uh, again, we all are entitled to have a good place to live, and uh, you know, so that's why I would urge the council members to think how they would feel if this was an issue that was going on in a district that they represented. Any other comments? Mr. Culver, do you want to join us for the vote? We're going to vote? Okay, from Beth, that's fine. Bless you. Mr. Culver is recovering from the crud that all the rest of us have had. We feel for you. All in favor of approving the motion, uh, or of, appro of, of approving the motion to approve the application as it has been granted, please indicate. Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Nay. Mr. Kling votes nay. Thank you um, very much. <coughs> I would charge the... Uh, the police department to do their duty uh, as we have discussed. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, uh, I would like to see if the council, if there could be some pursuing as far as looking into the issues that Mr. Culver had raised. Uh, and I don't know if people need to exchange telephone numbers with each other on that, but uh, I think that, uh, that that would be a a valid issue. I think it was discussed at a previous uh, hearing, and even then, I, I believe I'd said that I thought that would be a good solution because if it didn't happen, it would, this would be coming back. And we're getting ready to make a big expenditure concerning the municipal golf course, and it, this building was the original clubhouse restaurant of what was the, then the uh, Parkway Country Club back in the uh, in the 1960s. So we could kind of, you know meld them back together if there's a way that could be worked out. I would suggest the real estate discussions probably are best held in other settings, but thank you for I making I understand. I would just wanted to wave a flag about the, you know, what I think would be merit in, you know, at least starting some communication. But yes, I agree with you on that. Thank you. Uh, moving on, public hearings to be set. Uh, number one, a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance rezoning 101.3 acres of property lying on the east side of Gray Road and north of Huntsville Browns Ferry Road from residence <coughs> 1B district to highway business C4 district 28.82 acres and planned industrial district 77.48 acres. Uh, this is to be set for the February 23rd, 2017 regular council hearing. Move to set the hearing. Mr. Russell makes the motion, second, second by Mr. Kling. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Uh, the public hearing is set. Uh, public hearing, the number two resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance rezoning 2.10 acres of property lying on the north side of Davis Circle and east of Dr. Joseph Lowry Boulevard from Medical District to General Business C3 District to be set for February 23rd, 2017 at a regular council meeting. The Move to set the hearing. Second from the chair. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The public hearing is set for February 23rd. 
Uh, number three, a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance of the zoning of 1.26 acres of newly annexed property lying on the east side of Old Big Cove Road and on the north side of Kennedy Lane to residence 1B District to be set for February 23rd, 2017 at a regular uh, council meeting. Move to set the hearing. Second by the chair. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the public hearing is set. Uh, uh, six. For a resolution to set a public hearing for a major permit modification of the existing landfill construction and demolition permit number 45-01 to be set for February 22nd, 2017 here in the City Council Chambers at 6 o'clock. That will be a, a special hearing. Move to set the hearing. Second by the Chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the hearing is set for February 22nd. We will now move on to item number seven, communications and report communications from the public. Uh, when your name is called, please come to the microphone, give your name and address. You will have three minutes to address the council. And again, any questions regarding Huntsville Utilities matters will be recorded by Huntsville Utilities staff and will be answered at the uh, work session on January 19th. The first person to sign up is Mr. Tom Devinish regarding speed cushions, Mr. Devinish. Tom Devinish, 2807 Castle Pine Circle in uh, Hampton Cove. I've lived in Hampton, Hampton Cove for 22 years. Um, Castle Pine Circle is a loop off of Hampton Cove Way. And uh, so it's the only way to get in and out of my street is off of Hampton Cove Way. Um, earlier this, or in the summer of 2016, I requested that they put speed trailers in on Hampton Cove Way. There are people that are constantly speeding down that road, um, even speeding while they're texting. So they, they put speed trailers in. It was amazing the number of people that would see that they were doing 50 miles an hour and <coughs> didn't even hit the brakes. And so then I asked for a speed study, which is the first step to getting speed cushions put in. And so they did the speed study uh, in September of 2016 on Hampton Cove Way. And the section between DeFord Mill and Honors Row qualified at the, uh, by the city traffic engineering department's um, uh, guidelines. And so we are, um, we have a point of contact. They wouldn't allow me to be the point of contact because I didn't actually live on Hampton Cove Way, even though that's the only way to get to my street. So another person is the point of contact. He filled out the application that is required by the city traffic engineering department. Um, and then the Hampton Cove Owners Association decided to put the installation of speed cushions up for a vote to all 2,000 residents of Hampton Cove. Well, there are actually only 28 or 29 houses that have a dog in this fight. The houses between DeFord Mill and Honors Row, where they were exceeding the speed limit, um, are the only ones that should have, and, it, and it, all it requires is 75% of those people to sign that they want speed cushions installed. This is all on the traffic engineering website. It's black and white. And, and so now they've thrown it up for the, uh, the, all of the homeowners to vote on. Well, you know, the, all of the homeowners don't have to deal with it. Just like Dan Sanders, Mark Russell, they don't live on those streets. They don't have to put up with people going 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. In fact, I want to give you these charts that I've, I've emailed all this information to all of you. And I want to give you these charts because I doubt that you. Mr. Devinish, your, your, time, your time is up. Apparently, the light is not working. Thank you, Mr. King. Your, your time is up. Do you need another minute to finish, council members? Yes. Yeah. So the information that the traffic engineering department provided me is so minuscule to start, with, start out with. It's one line, 87, 85th percentile is 37 and a half miles an hour. So I had to request the detailed 
data from the speed study. There was one person doing 82 and a half miles an hour at five o'clock in the morning. And then another person doing 71 miles an hour at four o'clock in the afternoon on Hampton Cove Way. That <clears throat> is absolutely irresponsible. And half of these people are texting while they're doing it. And so, you know, we, ha you, Mr. Colvert was talking about we're obligated to issue a, a liquor license. Well, we have followed the rules that are outlined on the traffic engineering website. And so they are obligated, regardless of what the rest of the neighborhood voted on, um, to put speed cushions on Hampton Cove Way. Thank you, Mr. Devonish. Your time is up. Mr. Sanders is right back there. If you would like to have an opportunity to meet with him, um, I think you can discuss these issues with him That's at this time. Madam Chairman, the, the Homeowner Association meeting is Tuesday, the 17th, and Mr. Sanders and I will be out there in this item. Certainly, certainly will be discussed. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Mark, the, uh, Your time the, is up, the, Mr. Devinish. the Thank vote you. was closed at December the 19th. We should know the results Mr. of the Devinish, vote. Mr. Devinish, your time is up. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, the next person to sign up is Mr. Ralph Timberlake regarding transparency. Um, and again, the light up there isn't, timer light isn't working. I don't know if you can see it, but we'll put this little light here. Perhaps it can help you. You have three minutes, Mr. Timberlake. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Ralph Tumlake, 2117 Atkin Drive, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810. Madam Chair, oh, I can see it now, but I was going to tell you on behalf of me offering up the full measure for my country and for this freedom to which we enjoy, I was not able to see that light, and I hope you would want to uh, forgive me for that. To that end, uh, I wanted to talk about <clears throat> transparency and no one is above the law. One of the great things of this great democracy <clears throat> is that it is a nation ruled by law and not by men. However, let us never forget that compassion and mercy is always in the heart of a civilized individual. To that end, I have before me a, the bylaws of the Huntsville Health Care Authority of of Huntsville, Alabama, and it reads <coughs> in section 3-1, I mean 3-2, which talks about regular meetings. I quote, regular meetings of the board of directors will be held at the office of Huntsville Hospital at 6 p.m. on the last Thursday of each month or as determined by the board. Regular meetings of the board of directors are open to the public, open to the news media and the public, except that such meetings are permitted to be closed by law, laws of the state of Alabama. The only laws I know that are permitted to be closed in the state of Alabama are executive meetings, to which is a great tool to be utilized. While I'm not in the business of trying to isogeist what these documents says, and I'm not the best uh, reader there are, I do try to exegete what I do read so that I can be a good citizen. To that end, I think that's, that we all should do that as well. However, on my next issue, I've, I have besought this august body to dismount the Human Relations Committee because of their in it, in what I perceive to be their malfeasance, misfeasance, and ineptness. And I grant that, I come to that conclusion after I took time out to read the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, which says, to establish the uh, post office and postal roads. Why do I bring it up, Madam Chair? I bring it up because I think this body has an obligation to see that all of its citizens are never deprived of any of their rights, especially due process. The federal government or the officials of the federal government are not imbued. Your time is up, Mr. May I have one minute at your discretion? Council members, you may have an additional Thank minute. You. I do not think they are imbued to be um, with the ability to take away any citizen's right within this city. I think this city has an obligation to contact the authorities appropriate authorities 
and ensure that their subordinates are not absconding from filing the edicts as well as the, uh, the actual written of the law. And that is something, as you know, I've spoke many times about the problem that we have sought to persecute or prosecute people who own <coughs> their property because of the mailing problem. Thank you, you all. Y'all have a nice Martin Luther King Day. Remember, that gentleman offered up his life for freedom. I'm just asking you to offer up a little time for some justice. Thank you, Mr. Timberlake. And again, as you and I discussed before the meeting, your issues with the Huntsville Hospital Board are best taken up with the Huntsville Hospital Board, and your issues with the police department are a federal matter to be taken up with, or with the uh, post office, I'm sorry, are President, to be taken up with the post office. Not to interrupt, let me say I did meet with uh, Mr. Timberlake and discuss this issue as well, and, um, and we'll, we'll definitely be trying to be taken up with the Huntsville Hospital Board. Thank you. Um, the next person to sign up is Pastor T.C. Johnson. His subject is issues. Pastor Johnson, we've missed you. Welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. Pastor T.C. Johnson, 1800 Sparkman. I've missed you as well, dealing with the crud just like everyone else. Um, I saw a commercial, and I want to commend the mayor on the fact that it was a good commercial. Two of them, in fact, I was six, so I could watch TV. And uh, there was one about the school, and there was one about a uh, panel discussion with the chief, another officer. It was during that time that I encountered Mr. Black Jones, that's his name, Black Jones, B-L-A-Q-U-E. And in our discussion, trying to tell him how the improvements I had seen in the years on the p police force, he came back with these. He said he had, um, at his home, he walked out to the mailbox, officers asked him a question. He said he knew nothing about whatever they were talking about, walked back into his home, and uh, the officers followed him. Um, he came back to his door, opened his door, and said, you all still there? Closed his door, came back to his door. The officers were still there. Uh, Mr. Jones uses uh, quite a bit of language I don't use. And um, he said he came to his door and said something to the officers. One of them spit chewing tobacco, either in front of his door, right there. And he called him, told off that he was a nasty, bad word. The officer said, now you're under arrest, as I remember the story. He went back to, into his home. They kicked the door in, went into his home, went to a back room, kicked another door in, arrested him on the force, forcefully so, pulling his hair, and uh, booked him. Later, he was paid $1,200 and told that those officers would be uh, relieved. The question is, why did we pay Mr. Jones the $1,200? If we paid him $1,200, was his civil rights violated? And if so, did we um, contact the FBI? What is the disposition of the officers, especially uh, Steve Hopkins? He gave me that name and said that he was told that Mr. Ho Officer Hopkins would lose his job. Were the officers wearing a camera? And if so, can citizens review that incident? Thank you. Pastor Johnson, I believe uh, the chief is here. Could you, and you might meet with him um, regarding this matter out in the hall if uh, Chief McMurray is available tonight to discuss that. Uh, the next person to sign up is Ms. Jackie Reed. Good evening. I want to thank you all Please for state your name. name and address for the record. You Jackie know Reed. Used to be Fountain Circle until I got moved out of my bit, uh, territory, but I'm on Jack Coleman Drive. Thanks for allowing public input. I wish everyone a blessed, happy 2017 New Year. We live in a great city with caring, loving people. I want to thank all of our employees for the great job that they do. I'd like to let the record show that Mr. John Hamilton's not here tonight, and he's administrative assistant to the mayor. Um, I guess you might as well go ahead and pass the utility bill because, you know, we talk about growth in the city. We got a lot of it coming up this year, a lot of it, counting Madison Square Mile, 100 acres. And, of course, we've got smart meters and fiber. We've already done it, so 
there's no use of fussing over this. We might as well think about it and move on. But they give some good presentations, and I appreciate that, bringing all the all the things to the public and let the public get involved. I just sit here and saw you all vote on 80 crimes in a neighborhood, and you brought up all the stuff that was going on in Cummins Research Park. How many? Instances you've been out there with the police, and it's a crime area, and I think he's really just trying to justify what you're fixing to do out there because that is not blighted. It is not police called out there every other night. It is not what you just did to some more property. So anyway, I just want you to know you, you had 80 incidents out there. I never knew how much was in Cummings Research Park, but anyway... And I want to ask some questions tonight about the 100 acres that you okayed to be redeveloped out there. Who owns the property that you've okayed Mid-City to develop out there? <coughs> I, I just don't understand, and I see the hotels on there tonight. I would like you to explain what's going on right there. I would really like to have a copy of all the people that you bought out in uh, Madison Square Mall. I know you bought pennies out. I'd like to know what you paid Sears and everybody else out there when you evicted them out of the Madison Square Mall. And I want to bring up something else about why Jackie Reed memo out there on a Friday was not allowed. I'd like to have a copy of that memo that was sent from somebody's office to the guards out here that I can't get in the city hall building at all without that I have an appointment with somebody in the building and escorted in and out of this building. I don't know who come up with that. I cried all through Christmas. I'm still on it. I'm not through with it. I know my time is up. And you your sure time is up. Would you like another minute? I'll try to quieten down a little. Council members. But, you know, that's really bothering me, and I'm not over it. Why Jackie Reed, of all the people, cannot get in that building without an appointment, somebody escorting me in and out like a criminal. I'm a criminal in the city after 30 years right here in this building, coming in and out, running for mayor too many times, maybe not enough yet. But anyway, I think it's ridiculous. And my lawyer said, Freedom of Information Act, he gave me some lines that's out here section 552 if you need to know something from a lawyer call me but i'm asking to come up with that memo i want to see that memo that had my big name on it when i walked in out here i want somebody i want a copy of it thank you um mr mayor battle would you like to address those questions um i think the one of the questions was uh who owns uh, the property at Mid City? That would be RCP Properties, and the city has a, has a portion of it. Um, uh, what was paid? What has been paid is eight dollars per square foot. I think that's our appraisal price out there uh, for the property that was uh, that was that was used for the drainage and the and the public improvements. Uh, why why I can't get in the building? You can get in the building anytime, Ms. Reed. You just have to have an appointment. If you have an appointment, you can come in, visit with anybody. You are not a criminal. Nobody would ever expect you to be a criminal or anything. But you just have to have an appointment when you come in. Uh, that's just a normal way of doing business. Uh, we have lots of people who are doing lots of jobs, and um, as, as they have things that they have to do, we want to make sure that we can meet your needs that are, are necessary and provide you the time that is necessary, and that's what appointments do. So, thank you. And, Ms. Reed, as I've told you before, I make appointments when I need to meet with the mayor or John or any of the other department heads. It's simply a courtesy that we, that we would ask of you. Uh, the next person to sign up is Linda Ferguson, but I believe she's already spoken and she's no longer here, and also Charles Vogel. Uh, are they here? Then that concludes uh, communications from the public, and we will move on to item 8. Item 8A, Huntsville Utilities item. Oh, please let the record also reflect that Councilman Culver has left. Again, he was not feeling well. He's left, and uh, Councilman Keith is coming. We'll, we'll let him resume his seat. 
Uh, and I was remiss in um, excusing Mr. Hamilton earlier. He is out of town. Uh, again, item 8A, a resolution authorizing the approval to purchase and replace <coughs> vehicle number 3190 due to continuing maintenance issues. Again, this is a Huntsville Utilities item. Um, Mr. Gertis, would you like to tell us about this? Uh, very straightforward. It, it is what it says it is, uh, and in keeping with uh, desires of some in attendance, the estimated cost of this item is $37,000. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Move to approve. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Kling. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Gertis. Thank you. Item number nine, board appointments, 9A. Uh, one, a resolution to appoint Scott Harriman to the Huntsville Tennis Center Board of Control, place number four for a term to expire November 28, 2019. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Russell. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, 9A2 is a resolution to appoint Harold Weatherly to the Huntsville Tennis Center Board of Control, place number one, for a term to expire November 28, 2019, nominated at the December 15, 2016 regular council meeting. What's up, Ruth? Second. A motion by Mr. Keith, second by Mr. Russell. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Um, Mr. Weatherly, <clears throat> thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, we have three board appointments. The first is a nomination of Karen Hangartner for appointment to the Madison County Department of Human Resources Board, board Place 6 for a term to expire August 1st, 2019. And you have her resume in front of you. You can look at that. We will vote on her at the next council meeting. Also a nomination of Dr. Everett Roper for appointment to the Madison County Department of Human Resources Board Place 6 for a term to expire August 1st, 2019. And finally, a nomination of Cutter Hughes for reappointment to the Huntsville Public Library Board for a term to expire February 10th, 2021. Again, these nominations will be voted on at the next council, regular council meeting on the 26th. Item number 10 is approval of expenditures. 10A is a resolution authorizing expenditures for payment. Mr. Kling. Thank you, Madam President. Move for payment of vouchers in the amount of $13,628,254.75. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, 10B is the Finance Committee report. Mr. Kling, is there a report? There is not. Thank you. No report. We will move on to uh, number 11, communications from the mayor. Mayor Battle, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and thank you, Council. Um, for the record, I'd like to make the following appointment. John T. McMullen to the Planning Commission of the City of Huntsville to fill a vacancy seat 7 for a term to expire on March 12th, 2018. Um, other things, um, you know, with, um, I really want, would like to, we've been, uh, had a great week. We um, had a groundbreaking for um, City Center uh, uh, <coughs> two days ago and uh, council members uh, came, uh, came to it. And I wanna say, you know, none of this happens without a council who will work with people and in partnership and in partnership with the local community and I want to congratulate council because uh, that's that's a big victory uh, for the community and it's a big victory for for our city um, and what y'all are doing is, is helping make that happen so thank you for your your cooperation your work and your partnership in that um, this Saturday the MLK parade starts at 1130 in front of the post office on Clinton Avenue uh, a couple of council members and myself will be in the uh, 1928 fire truck um, as, as we go around in the parade and we will be uh, pretty close to the front of the parade. Uh, we'll be, uh, the, uh, this is, I've been honored by being named Grand Marshal of the parade this time. So um, I look forward to riding with council members around uh, in, in, in that parade. Uh, also, uh, we had a press conference this weekend and we had something that uh, it's not earth shaking on the earth side, but it's very earth shaking in the city of Huntsville. Um, animal control uh, had a press conference. We had a 92% uh, uh, save rate on the animals that came into, into the uh, animal shelter this year. We, as you know, we partner with the county commission in doing this. 
Uh, so we take in uh, animals from the county and from the city. Uh, <coughs> we try to get them adopted back out. One of the worst reports I ever had was eight years ago when I came in. We had 10,000 animals come in, and, and we adopted out 3,000. But that meant that 7,000 animals were destroyed, and that is really sad. Uh, this year, uh, we had 5,000 animals come in uh, who were brought into the animal shelter. That's because of the spay and neuter program and the emphasis everybody has put on spay and neuter. And if you've ever seen those reports, how many animals are actually have to be destroyed, you will believe in spay and neuter. I didn't until I saw those reports. And uh, this year, we had about 5,100 animals come in. Uh, we uh, adopted out 92 percent of them because of a lot of hard work by communications and by uh, animal control and all the people there and a lot of advocates out in the community so it was a great report to have um, everybody uh, if you will remember if your garbage is picked up on Monday Monday is a city holiday Martin Luther King Day so your garbage will be picked up on Tuesday uh, and come out and enjoy the uh, Martin Luther King celebrations uh, that we will have we will have a breakfast which sometimes turns into a brunch uh, on Monday uh, and it will be a great event and uh, we invite everybody out and then also next week we start into scale back it's been a great holiday season but it's time to get back into scale back uh, the mayor and my erstwhile friend and our city attorney mr. Riley will be on a team um, which uh, will be very interesting uh, and so if we're a little grouchy the next couple of weeks, you know why, because we're losing weight. Uh, so. And also we had uh, on Sunday and Monday, we had the mayors from Mobile, Birmingham, uh, Montgomery and Tuscaloosa here joining us. And we talked about best practices out there. We talked about the federal elections and the new, new things happening in the federal side, what's happening in the state capitol. Uh, but we also talked a lot about how we can improve services and how each of us can improve services. Every, every one of those communities has something that we look at. Uh, yesterday we were in Mobile and we were looking at the cyber um, command center that the uh, Mobile police have put together, a great system. They use unmanned aerials to, um, to monitor neighborhoods and they have a lot of things that they do um, that are, are good practices that we need to look at and see if we can emulate it. On the, on the same hand, we have many things that we do that they would like to um, catch up with us on. So those meetings of um, the five mayors of the cities that are <coughs> over 100,000 in population in, in the state of Alabama are always good meetings for each of us to um, get a little bit, bit better at what we do. And I cannot say enough about how many compliments each of those guys had about our city and the way that our city looked and what was going on here, the building and the progression of the city. Um, they all had some great things to say about some of the accomplishments and those accomplishments are made because of department heads out there, because of city employees, because of the council members and everybody working together in great partnership. So uh, to each of you, I say thank you. Have, uh, have, a, have a good holiday. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Battle. Uh, we will move on to item number 12, communications from council members, and we will begin with Councilman Kling. Thank you, Madam President. Well, since the last council meeting that we've had, uh, we have said goodbye to two great people in the community. Uh, Elizabeth Statham Parkus uh, from uh, Northeast Huntsville, and uh, earlier this week, uh, we said goodbye to Fran Woodard, who uh, had been uh, just a great mentor and friend to uh, several of us uh, that we've known in city and school board uh, government for, for many years. Uh, both of them will be missed. Uh, they had many friends. They were good sources of wisdom and, and good people who uh, certainly left an indelible uh, uh, footprint uh, in this community. Uh, because of the holiday, the library is going to be closed Monday night, so I will not be having my monthly town meeting, uh, but certainly I'll pick back up on it uh, during the month of uh, February. And that's all I have, Madam President. I hope everybody's uh, off to a good new year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kling. Councilman Keith. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just brief, I want to say thank you to the individuals who were involved in my trip to D.C. Uh, what an immersion um, to fill you know, in politics and policy. Um, it, it was amazing. I want to say thank you to Harrison uh, for initiating the conversation between the lobbyists up there. He did a wonderful job. Um, and thank you to Ms. King. And I felt like she was my mother at the time, making sure I had my bags checked and calling me, telling me about the weather. Um, everybody on the you know, community development, all the other people who helped me out, Tamika and Ms. Gale, 
um, that trip was just a learning lesson that it almost superseded my graduate degree. Um, also, I wanted to say Monday there is the uh, Unity Breakfast. Um, I think a number of us up here will be there as well. We would love to have you out and the men of Alpha who will be having that at the VBC. I also wanted to say on Saturday, uh, our wonderful school board rep, Ms. Watkins, will be having a conversation around the superintendent, which is very important. I know we, we think city side here, but the city school board right now is trying to decide on a superintendent, which is extremely important. That is Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, and I also wanted to recognize some of the people um, out there. The NAACP is here. Mr. Um, Brennan, I want to say thank you so much for coming out, and um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Russell. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, too, will be participating in the superintendent search as much as possible next week. Uh, so if any of my constituents have ideas of characteristics they'd want to see in a superintendent or questions they'd want me to ask, please uh, forward them to me. Thank you. Um, finally, uh, Happy New Year uh, to everyone. I, I really enjoyed a couple of weeks there with not a lot going on, but it sure ramped up very quickly this week. In fact, just today I had the opportunity to speak to the Aldersgate Seniors Luncheon to about 50 people, 50 seniors there. Uh, that was preceded by uh, speaking to a women's club group, and then I ended the day today with some scouts who came and visited me at my office. In every case, we talked about all the great things that are going on in the city. Um, we got to talk about uh, the, the construction on the South Parkway, but we also talked about the growth of the city, and this is one of the fastest growing cities in the Southeast, and that's why all those orange cones are there. We talked about new developments that are coming to the city. We talked about um, the redevelopments taking place in South Huntsville with the move of Grissom, the redevelopment of Community Complex, the redevelopment of Dino <coughs> Landing, the redevelopment of Hazelin Square, and lots of opportunities, and in every case, um, in every with every one of those three groups there was such excitement about uh, the direction the city was moving and a genuine appreciation for the vision um, that's that's driving those changes um, speaking of changes we have a, a new face with us tonight Joanna Broad White is the new government relations representative for the Huntsville Area uh, Association of Realtors and welcome Joanna she's been with us a lot of time uh, a lot of other roles and this is a great one for her Looking forward to working with you. I also want to recognize Captain uh, Jeffrey Rice. He spoke this afternoon to the Leadership Huntsville Connect class and representing the city police and did a wonderful job. We have great people working for the city and, and it's wonderful when they can go out and represent the city so, so very ably. And then finally, um, as a couple of other people have mentioned, the superintendent interview process begins next week. Those interviews will be uh, uh, televised. They are also open to the public, and they're going to be 4 30 or 5 30 in the evening. There are also forms on the school system website that permit the public to make comments uh, regarding those uh, superintendent candidates. And uh, it would be a very public process, a very transparent process, and I would suggest that everybody take a look at the school system website and take advantage. Of that, process, of that process as we try to, to find the best superintendent Mr. possible for our school system. Moving on to item number 13, unfinished. Is there a question? Okay. Okay. Unfinished business items for action. 13A is an ordinance number 16-964 amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Huntsville, Article 2, Administration and Enforcement, Chapter 25, Traffic and Vehicles, Division 2, Vehicle Towing and Impoundment. This was introduced at the December 15, 2016 regular council meeting. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Russell. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any, Aye. any opposed? Motion carries. 13B is an ordinance number 16-965 amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Huntsville, Article 3, Precious Metals and Stones, Chapter 8, Business, introduced December 15, 2016, a regular council meeting. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Kling. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 13C, an ordinance number 16-966, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Huntsville, Article 2, Bingo, Chapter 4, Amusements and Entertainments, introduced December 15, 2016, at a regular council meeting. Chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Russell. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We have no new business items for introduction. We will move on to item number 15, new business items for consideration or action. Uh, the chair would like to hold items M and W. Are there any other items anyone wishes to hold? 
Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to hold 15H and 15P as in Paul. Um, H and P. Are there any other items anyone wishes to hold? Hearing none, we will move on. Uh, item 15A is a request for authorization to fill to advertise and fill five equipment operator three positions. 15B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to commit home funds to cottages at Indian Creek LLC for cottages at Indian Creek upon approval of their grant application to the Alabama Housing Finance Authority. 15C is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement between the low bidder SJ and L General Contractor LLC for Aldridge Creek Greenway Extension Project Number 6516WP01 and LDOT Project Number TAPHV. TA14952. 15D is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a special employment agreement between the City of Huntsville and Dewey Lynn Majors. 15E is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garver LLC for the 2017 on call surveying services project number 7117 SP21. 15F is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a reimbursable agreement between the City of Huntsville and the Alabama Department of Transportation for relocation of utility facilities on private or public right of way work for Martin Road Sanitary Sewer Relocation Project numbers 7117 SS01 and ALDOT Project number STPAACN11901. 15G is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garver LLC for engineering services, design services for Martin Road sewer line relocation, project number 7117SS01, and LDOT project number ACAA 60160F, ATRP 012, formerly known as project number STPAACN11901. 15I is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into agreement with the low bidder as specified in the attached summary of bid for acceptance. 15J is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of donations. 15K is an ordinance amending budget ordinance number 16659 by changing appropriated funds for various departments and funds. Uh, 15L is an ordinance amending the budget ordinance number 16659 by changing the authorized personnel strength in various departments and funds. 15N is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute change order number one between the City of Huntsville and Joe Still Building Company, Inc. for construction services for the Clinton Avenue parking garage located at 116 Clinton Avenue. 15O is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute change order number one between the City of Huntsville and Premier Structures, Inc. for construction services for renovations for feline housing at Animal Services located at 4950 Triana Boulevard. 15Q is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a special employment agreement between the City of Huntsville and Pamela M. Stevens. 15R is a request for authorization to advertise and fill the position of parking and public transit service worker grade six. 15S is a resolution authorizing the city attorney to settle the worker's compensation claim of Christian Mitchell. 15T has been deleted. 15U is a resolution authorizing the city of Huntsville to conduct condemnation proceedings for the acquisition of certain property for the Wolde Flooring Sewer Project number 7116SS06. 15V is a resolution authorizing the City of Huntsville to conduct condemnation proceedings for the acquisition of certain property for the Wayne Road and Old Monrovia project. 15X is a resolution authorizing the mayor to approve and enter into a one-year lease between the City of Huntsville and Woody Anderson Ford for a one police vehicle for the total amount of $4,999.92. 15Y is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Huntsville and Sharp Communications. Madam Chair, I move for consolidation approval of 15A through 15G, 15J through L, 15N through O, 15Q, 15S, 15U, V, 15X, and 15Y. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion to approve carries. Uh, going back now to item 15H. A resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number one to the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garber LLC for land surveying services for sanitary sewer manhole mapping project number 7116 SP10. Move to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Kling. Is Madam Chairman, discussion? I have questions. And I believe Mr. Cook is ready to answer those questions for you. Mr. Cook, since Ms. Reed uh, has to have an appointment, she asked me to take over her job and ask you questions. Yes, sir. So uh, she wants to know, uh, please explain this project. It, it is not a project councilman. It's a standing contract that we keep at all times to, to uh, 
bring GPS locations back on manholes. You approve this project on a yearly basis. It's a typically a $70,000 contract when we put it out. Uh, it has simply ran past the one-year time limit that's on it, and we are doing a, it is a change order, but it's actually not increasing the value any at all. It just get, uh, extends the time on the amount of money that's left, which is just above $48,000. Thank you. Are there any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 15M is a resolution to designate and declare official intent regarding public improvement expenditures prior to warrant issue pursuant to IRC of 1986, Treasury Regulation Section 1.150.2, subsection E. Move to approve. Second by the chair uh, is uh, uh, Ms. Sargent. Would you please um, explain this to us? Yes, what this resolution doing? allows us to cover some expenses that have already been used for the fire trucks that you approved in December under a bond or a warrant issue that we will be doing in February and any other items that may expend between now and that issue. What would some of those items be? We have schools. No, th um, these are non-taxable, so there's some TIF-6 money in this issue as well as the fire trucks. And then the schools are also on this borrow. And the total amount is? Of non-taxable, just under $30 million. <clears throat> are there any other questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Um, item P is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute change order number one between the city of Huntsville and Pierce Construction Company, Inc. to provide construction services for restroom renovations located at 2820 Holmes Avenue. Chair moved, moves. Moved to approve. Second by the chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I have questions for Mr. Easter. Uh, Mr. Easter, could you describe this project and tell us why the change order is necessary? Uh, yes, this is a project where we're renovating the restrooms at what used to be the Selden Center. It is located on... Uh, Clinton. This is a, a, going to be a new police facility. Uh, the restrooms were not ADA compliant. They also was in disrepair. The, uh, the change order was needed because once we got in there and started doing some of the demo work related to the floor, we found that there was uh, structural tendons within the concrete that you didn't know until we cut the holes in the floor for the, for the plumbing. So it, it required us to uh, do some additional uh, structural work, uh, additional work that was unforeseen. In addition to that, uh, while we were doing the work, we found that there was some main electrical conduit and wire that ran from the main panel to another area of the building that was uh, not in service. We had to replace the wire within the conduit. So this ended up being $8,955 of a $300,000 job, and that's about 2.5% of the total contract. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any, uh, any opposed? The motion carries. 15W is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a real estate agreement between the city of Huntsville and Madison Square Hotel, LLC. You have substitute A before you. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Russell. Any, uh, uh, let's see, Ms. Martin. Yes, ma'am. I yes. have questions. Tell us how much this is. Yes, sir. This is uh, based on appraised value, and it is for a purchase price of $207,025.36 for 0.56 acres. And why is this property needed? This is located at the southeast corner of Research Park Boulevard and US 72 West. It is needed for drainage improvements and utility extensions to, to serve the out parcels that remain on the site. And what happens if we don't buy it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would be very hard to meet the time frame scheduled to demo, demo the, 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 the building. For Madison Square Mall yes, and the new city center? Yes, sir. Center. Or Madison. Ma Mid City Mid or whatever city, it's called? Yes. Okay, thank you. Other questions? This is uh, coming out of the money, the account that's already been budgeted for the account. Is that correct? For the yes, project? sir. So this is not additional to the cost of the project? No, ma'am. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, we have no vacation of easements, no vacation of right-of-ways, no deeds for acceptance, no routine, routine bond satisfactions, no liquor bond mortgages, which brings us to item 17, non-roster communications from the public. If you wish to address the, the council, please come to the microphone, give your name and your address. You have three minutes. Ms. Reed. Jacob Reed, I'm back. 
I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Russell, for holding some of these and explaining to them. Um, I hope y'all don't take your hate out on me. I still love you no matter what's going on. I don't like your government. I've seen three, four mayors come and go. I've seen many, many people sitting in your seats. Trust me, over 30 years, they come and go. So I just want to say that no, I don't know what you're going to do about the situation's not gone away yet. I wish I could set it aside and let it go. But I just want to copy that memo. And I don't see anybody else being ushered in and out of this place here like I was. I can't sleep at night, and all this bothers me. And none of you counsel, you just sit up there like idle. You got your motor on idle about this situation. That's okay. I can handle that too. But, but it really bothers me that y'all just swallow this and go right on. I haven't let it go. Maybe I should. I got the good man working on it, and he don't let me sleep at night. So anyway, I love you, and, and things will change, I promise you. Thank you. Ms. Reed, I was proud to sit right next to you at the Huntsville Utilities public hearing Monday, morning, Monday night. <laughs> I didn't I did not make any comments about you you not being able to get your hair done for the TV cameras. Ms. Is there anyone else who wishes to I move uh, to adjourn. Oh wait, hang on. I think Miss Arnold. Yes, Lenise Arnold, North Alabama Coalition for the Homeless, 2112 Buckingham Drive, Huntsville, Alabama. Um, basically, I just came to give you an update or after action report for our first warming center um, event that we had uh, last week. It lasted approximately four days. Mm -hmm. We had about 45 guests at the warming center. I'd like to thank the Huntsville Transportation Department for providing free transportation to the warming center, as well as the Huntsville community for your support with your donations. Special uh, thanks goes out to the Manor House because they provided probably 95% of the food that was utilized during that occasion. I also wanted to update you on our upcoming 2017 point in time count. Um, the point in time count is the annual um, count that we do of all our homeless population that's required by HUD. It will be conducted on January the 31st. Um, many changes have, have occurred over the years. This will be the eighth time I've done the point in time count under my administration. Um, I think we're prepared. I think we've identified some gaps um, in previous years and put in um, situations to be able to cover those gaps that, that existed. Last year we saw approximately a decrease of about 93 people in our homeless population. So hopefully this year we'll see um, a further decrease in our homeless population. Unfortunately over the last two years, NACH or the continuum of care as a total has lost about $180,000 and that's before our new administration takes over. So I'm somewhat concerned um, that loss of about $180,000 means that we're about 27 permanent supported housing units less than what we had previously. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Thank you for the work that y'all are no, doing. Sir. Is there anyone else who wishes? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Keith. Do you have this in a, like a PDF or can you get this email to the council? The, the, the stats when you get the January report and such? Um, so yes, we normally present the information in council meeting as well as this with the media and post it on our website. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council? Move to adjourn again. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all for being with us tonight.